Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, my name is Alex and I'm a cloud subject matter expert within Adobe. Um, I'll partner with Marius to deliver this presentation about fast experiences with AEM as a cloud services. Um, this is the agenda for today. We will go through some technical basic concepts around the cache um, and we will have some tips and tricks around the cache optimization. We'll make sure to leave some time for, uh, for a Q&A session in the end of the, of the presentation. Um, I will start with a short real story. Uh, one of the customers had a go live with cloud services uh, without running any performance tests prior to the, to the go live and without letting the, the CSME team know uh, about this change. Uh, after a couple of hours from the moment they switched the DNS and made the, um, the public announcement, uh, the site became un, uh, unreachable. Um, a war room has been opened with everyone uh, involved and during the RCA it appeared that uh, the caching at the CDN was around 5%. Um, even the publishers auto scale to the maximum, it didn't actually solve the problem of the cache. Even adding more publishers than the maximum uh, wouldn't have solved the issue either because these will not compensate with the lack of, um, of caching. Uh, imagine that you will compare 20 machines that will have the CPU exhausted with thousands of CDN machines that can be used uh, at the edge. And the most important thing is that the CDN is already included by default in the, in the offering. So why not making use of it? And to, to end up this story, after making a couple of changes in the cache control and, uh, and changing the response vary, um, the customer went live with a caching ratio of 96%. Um, and the two publishers were running uh, their CPUs uh, at around 30%, uh, between 30 and 35 um, we all know that, um, that caching is the process uh, by which a file gets uh, stored in a temporary location. Uh, CDN servers cache HTML scripts, JavaScripts, uh, images uh, from the origin servers in proxy servers to reduce latency. So whenever the browser's user requests information from a website through a CDN service for the first time, the CDN delivers the content by connecting to the origin server and then saving the content in the nearest data center to the user. I think we should set up the baseline for the concepts that we'll talk about during this presentation and that's why we, we have this, uh, this theoretical slide. Um, the successful access of the requested place of data in the CDN cache memory is referred as a, as a cache hit. If a browser requests a piece uh, of content and CDN uh, has it cached, then it will deliver that content. This is, uh, this is referred um, to as a cache hit. However, if the content is not available, then the CDN makes the request to the origin server. This is classified as a cache miss. Additionally, a non-cacheable request uh, for various reasons is defined as a, as a pass request. An example of a, as a, pass requ of a pass request is the a user input that needs to be recorded. In a nutshell, high cache uh, hit ratio result in faster web apps while low cache hit ratio um, will, will result in slower web apps. And this increases the stress on the origin server as well as increased latency and drop connection. You can see also some form used in order to calculate the hit ratio and the cache coverage. Um, and this will be used in, in our data in the next slides. Now, how can you get these values? Well, the easiest and the simplest way is to check the response headers in the browser itself. And we will have a short demo on how to get this information in, in two minutes or so. Firstly, firstly CDN adds uh, by default the X cache and the X cache hits headers to HTTP response. 
also fa fastly owns and is the proprietary of these headers. Um, so X cache hit means that your request was served by, by the CDN uh, and not by the origin servers. X cache header um, indicates whether the request was a hit or a miss um, and fastly writes this header into the responses. Um, this non-standard header is appended to all the responses by default using a simplified derivative of the value of uh, fastly info dot state variable. If this value is hit or any value that starts with hit dash, then uh, x cache will uh, will be set to hit. Otherwise, it will be it will be a miss. Request resulting in a pass will be reported as a miss, while request resulting in a um, in edge generated synthetic content will be reported as a, as a hit. Additionally, all hit all hits resulting from uh, from serving stale or background revalidation will also be reported as hit. Uh, X cache hits. Uh, indicates the number of cache hit uh, cache hits in each node. Uh, fastly appends this non-standard header to responses by default again. Uh, and I think it worth mentioning here that the hit uh, that the hit count is per cache server and not per uh, per data center. And I will share uh, a short demo. So, for example, this is the the website we are using for for testing the weekend side. Maybe I've seen you you've seen it in in several uh, with several occasions during trainings or or other uh, other activities. So basically, um, if you load a page uh, that is hosted uh, in uh, with us, and you go to networking, you will see. Um, under the the response headers that these two values are um, are set here x cache uh, hit and x cache hits um, and then if you go for example for this font you will see that the x cache hits is uh, is 14 uh, now additionally you can do a um, short test and if you are looking for uh, if you are adding a parameter here you will see that this request will be uh, will be a miss as you can see here um, all right so i'll continue um, the presentation Now, uh, how you can these values in an aggregated view? Well, you can just submit um, a customer care ticket and ask your CSME to provide your, uh, you the values and the dashboards. We are more than happy to, to help you with, um, with this data. Um, along with that, we can schedule a presentation where we will get uh, you through the values uh, and we'll make uh, some recommendation based on your custom uh, miss and pass requests and uh, I think these discussions should should happen prior to the go live preferably along with some uh, performance tests that that will be run uh, also we are working on a white paper that will cover the cache subject and before going to the to the um, to some more technical highlights of the presentation um, I wanted to emphasize the fact that we strongly advise to apply the changes that my colleague Marius will recommend because it will make a huge difference in the performance of your website and will bring a great experience uh, to the end user. Hi, uh, welcome to the second part of the presentation, the cache optimization tips. Uh, my name is Marius Petria and I'm a software engineer in the uh, content delivery team of uh, AEM as a cloud service. Uh, this basically deals with uh, uh, delivering content from AEM instances to the visitors of your site. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I would like to start with a, a short a description of the um, uh, delivery architecture. Um, 
is very schematic. So um, on the left-hand side, you'll uh, have the visitor on the internet comes um, uh, and uh, uh, visits your site. It will first, the request will uh, first go to the CDN. The CDN will uh, uh, forward it to AEM. AEM will give a response. Uh, <coughs> the CDN uh, will see it and will uh, pass it back to the visitor. So this is the basic flow, but actually it's it's uh, uh, a bit more complicated than that because the CDN can also cache responses. So whenever it has a cache response, um, uh, instead of sending it to AEM, it will deliver it from cache. Um, what's important to, um, to understand here is that every request uh, in AM as a cloud service goes through the CDN. It's not just assets or <clears throat> videos or big files, it's every request. So um, in some sense, every request uh, is a, it's, it's an opportunity to be optimized if it's cached. And why it's important to be cached? It, um, it's important because it saves uh, resources uh, uh, in uh, AEM uh, and uh, also the overall experience of your site will be faster because CDN is uh, geographically distrib distributed. There are like uh, 200 uh, uh, points of presence uh, all over all over the world. So your visitor will be uh, very close to one of these uh, uh, server. Um, I will uh, present you next, and uh, Alex, if you can switch to the next slide, how we can get content uh, uh, to the CDN. So it's not by pushing it or um, matters like this, but by using standard HTTP uh, caching headers. So um, <clears throat> the simplest way is uh, for the origin uh, for AEM and dispatcher to respond with uh, the proper caching headers. And the simplest way to do that is to uh, set these headers in, uh, in the dispatcher. Uh, you can also set them in AEM, uh, but um, uh, Apache uh, configurations give you uh, a declarative way to do it. So for example, you can uh, uh, set all uh, cache all images for, um, uh, for 10 minutes or all, H all HTML. And um, uh, it, it's just a matter of setting the cache control uh, header. So what's important to, uh, to realize here is that uh, when you are setting, uh, when you are instructing the CDN to cache things, uh, you are effectively making that content public. So because it will be served directly from the CDN and it will not hit your uh, um, AEM instance again to check for authorization or, or authentication. So uh, be careful when you add this. So, uh, uh, and always be specific on the folders that you want to be cached. So for example, always start your um, declarations like this content dam or content or even more specific if you have private things uh, under content. So uh, that's one uh, key takeaway. It's easy to set the headers, but it, it is also easy to make mistakes. So just uh, do this for only for your content, uh, for your public content. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, in general, setting the cache control will, will do the trick, but uh, there is one thing to have in mind that uh, uh, there are multiple caching layers. Uh, dispatcher is one of it, uh, one of them, and CDN the other one. It's also the browser cache and uh, one, uh, uh, easy to make mis uh, uh, mistake easy to make is uh, uh, that the age in, in the dispatcher cache can become uh, can become bigger than uh, the max age that you are putting it uh, 
with a directive for the cash control. So, <coughs> so in that case, uh, the CDN will not cache uh, the resource. So uh, always uh, make sure that uh, when you are setting the cache control, um, you are all also setting the H to zero. So uh, this can happen um, because uh, dispatcher has different rules than uh, than the CDN. And for example, the dispatcher can cache in indefinitely uh, until uh, it is uh, uh, invalidated. So until the resource uh, is invalidated. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I can show you now uh, some uh, more advanced uh, uh, examples like uh, our uh, presentation weekend site. If you look at the cache control that we said uh, there, it has uh, more advanced uh, directives like uh, uh, directing the, uh, the browser, which is the max age, directing the CDN, which is the uh, S uh, max age, and also uh, directives for stale content. So this site can be accessed publicly as Alex showed, and also the, uh, the source code is uh, available uh, on GitHub. Uh, I will talk more about these uh, uh, special directives in the next slides. So if, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, everything is, uh, is good if, uh, if the resource is cached uh, and it's simple, it's uh, simple to get it cached. You set a cache control uh, on it, uh, but uh, uh, what happens when the resource uh, expires? So when the resource expires, uh, then uh, uh, the CDN has to go back to the origin. So when the first visitor comes uh, and hits an expired, uh, uh, resource, it goes to the origin, and then uh, uh, it will be blocked. Uh, the origin has to respond and uh, will serve the response back to, to the visitor. Uh, this uh, uh, might not seem uh, very uh, important. I mean, if you cache for a long time, uh, like uh, one week, uh, then uh, is not that important. But if you want to decrease your your uh, TTL, then uh, the the cache will expire frequently, and you will want to optimize this uh, refetching of content. And especially that this refetching is done from all the pops. So, for example, if your content expires in every uh, of the two hundred pops. Uh, then uh, the origin will be hit sim simultaneously uh, with uh, requests from uh, from those pops. And uh, uh, the the easiest uh, there are two ways to optimize this. Basically, uh, is to always use uh, conditional requests and uh, fastly support this. Uh, basically, every response that contains last modified, uh, last modified uh, and uh, e tags uh, will be uh, uh, fetched by fastly using conditional requests. So it will, they will only be fetched from origin if they changed. Uh, uh, luckily, this is supported by default by dispatcher. So for cache to resources, so if a, a resource is cached uh, by the dispatcher, uh, the last modified any tag will be sent uh, to the CDN. So there is a conversation there that uh, is supported uh, automatically. Uh, there are some uh, caveats to that be, uh, because the last modified um, uh, by default in the dispatcher is is related to the uh, date when the cache copy was created on disk. So uh, if you want something more advanced, you have to send it from, from AEM. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, this will only s solve uh, the uh, transfer si uh, size, but uh, your visitors, if they are unlucky to hit uh, an expired resource, will, uh, will still wait. 
So uh, that's where the second directive uh, uh, comes, uh, or the, se uh, the second technique, uh, stale while you revalidate. This uh, means that the CDN, you allow the CDN to serve stale content while revalidating in the uh, background. So this way, uh, your visitors will not see any delay uh, or unpredictable delay uh, if they hit an expired uh, resource. Um, this is easy to set up. Uh, you just add a directive to, uh, to the cache control. This should be typically bigger than the, uh, uh, than the uh, TTL of the resource. Like uh, if you do store one, if you cache one minute, you can uh, uh, serve stale for one hour or so. Okay, so uh, serving stale uh, content uh, helps you uh, improve the speed on, uh, uh, on refetching and revalidation, but it also helps you improve the availability. So when you have unexpected, unexpected errors in your application code, or there are some infrastructure uh, uh, problems that make your uh, origin unavailable, then you can still have availability at the edge. Uh, if you set stale if error um, directive, the CDN will serve uh, uh, even if there is an error from the uh, from the backend, will serve whatever is cached. So this will uh, help you with unexpected errors and uh, unavailability windows. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I want to mention this. Uh, a technique. So typically, uh, there is one um, uh, cache key per uh, uh, URL. So every resource is stored in the cache key of its URL. But there are a lot of use cases when uh, uh, you'd want to uh, serve different uh, uh, content uh, on the same URL. Uh, for example, for different, uh, for people in different countries or in different continents, or even more simple uh, for uh, if the browser accepts different encodings. And, and this is supported uh, uh, by standard HTTP header, by the very header. Um, and so the very header allows you to uh, to vary by a request header or a, a header added by Fastly before evaluating uh, uh, the cache key. Uh, it, it can be, so if, for example, if you want to serve uh, different uh, pages by uh, continent, different uh, content by continent on the same landing page, uh, you can add, uh, uh, this header XAM client content uh, client continent uh, to the very header. This header is uh, uh, added by uh, our uh, Fastly VCL, and it's always included in in the request. So Fastly will will use this when uh, when creating the cache key. So this is useful, but it's also uh, dangerous, and uh, uh, I want to mention this especially because uh, it's uh, uh, when uh, you shouldn't vary too much. Uh, there are uh, maximum 200 variants accepted by Fastly and specifically don't vary by user agent or by IP or cookie because they have very big cardinality. And I wanted to mention this because in one of uh, until some while ago, we had in uh, our default uh, dispatcher code uh, vary by user agent, which made the uh, cache uh, very ineffective. So if you have, if you still have see this response vary by user agent, uh, just remove it. Uh, the new deployments, I mean, the new projects that start uh, from new uh, 
uh, code will not have this. Okay, uh, I have one more slide. Uh, if you can go to that one, but I will not insist because I think uh, I'm out of time and I want to leave you time for questions. So uh, uh, Fastly supports uh, special header, surrogate control, that is just like cache control, uh, but it, it is only for commanding things to Fastly. So it's removed by, by Fastly and uh, it is respected, but, but removed and is not passed on to the browser. So it's useful to control it, uh, to control differently the browser cache and the CDN cache. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thank you. And uh, um, if you have any more questions, I can try to answer. I don't, I, uh, there is one question. I, I don't see if it's uh, there is a response to it. If uh, we can use VCL uh, in uh, Fastly CDN for AM as a cloud, the answer is that the VCL is not customizable. Uh, uh, so, you cannot use it. And I think Ian might have answered that the alternative is to use a different CD, a CDN in front of Fastly. Uh, this only applies, I mean, caching techniques, I think apply to every CDN and uh, uh, also to AMS, but uh, AMS, uh, as far as I know, do not does not come with uh, uh, default CDN in front of it. So, and especially it's not fastly. Uh, so for example, things like surrogate control probably are not relevant there. Uh, yeah, the specifics. The, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the techniques that we mentioned here applies for uh, for basic CDNs and the AMS hosted. Yeah, they are not coming with Fastly by default. Um, so, like you mentioned, Marius, the surrogate ones will not apply uh, unless it it is Fastly. But uh, the 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 dispatcher configuration that uh, we mentioned in the first slides will apply for even for AMS hosted sites with CDN in front of them. Is it on the roadmap to allow pass-throughs using Fastly to allow for a gradual? I I don't uh, understand exactly the question. Uh, the I will try to answer a bit. Is uh, the CDN, the Fastly CDN, uh, as it is today, is in front of every deployment of AM as a cloud, uh, and you can put another CDN in front. So, uh, but it will go. Also, that one will go through through Fastly. Uh, I I didn't said uh, Fastly supports vary by cookie. Uh, you, I, I, I put it in the bad uh, uh, column. You should not vary by cookie. It has very big cardinality. Uh, you can do. You, you cannot configure the CDN to block requests at the CDN level. So you have to do it in in the dispatcher and vary the response by the country header. I think we are out of time, but uh, we are happy to answer other questions if there are still some questions here uh, that are unanswered, or if you still have questions, uh, we we can we can answer more. Thank you for attending the session. Thanks, bye.